In the fall of 2012, Superstorm Sandy crashed into the coastline of New York and New Jersey. With a storm surge so massive, it ripped homes off their foundations, shattered boardwalks, devastated subway tracks and tunnels, and blacked out Lower Manhattan. It took the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers 10 years to produce a protection plan to defend the area from the next such weather event. The Corps recommended a robust and complex system of barriers, flood walls, berms, and levees, with a price tag of $52.6 billion. It's the most ambitious plan in the Corps' history. The project is set to go before the U.S. Congress for approval. But a coalition of residents, environmentalists, and climate activists say the plan is focused on preventing the last crisis, not the next one. One of the biggest problems with the plan is that it started out with too narrow a focus. So when the Corps does a project, they can do a single hazard project or a multi-hazard project. And they started this project as single hazard, only looking at storm surge impacts. Tracy Brown is the president of Riverkeeper, a nonprofit aimed at protecting the Hudson River and New York's drinking water. What it needs to be is a multi-hazard plan because in addition to having storm surges, we have these heavy rain events where we are seeing loss of life and incredible damage to property. We have sea level rise, creating monthly flooding in more and more communities now. So if we don't start with the multi-hazard approach and say this is what we're gonna address, we're just gonna end up with a hammer that hits one nail. And we have many nails and many challenges. Some of the proposal envisions walls that might sever New York City residents from the rivers around them. Andrew Kruchkovich is with Columbia University's Climate School. In Greenpoint, Brooklyn, Long Island City, Queens, and then also on the lower west side of Manhattan along the Hudson River, what's proposed are approximately 12 to 20 foot high seawalls. So this will change our experience uh, with waterways with the coastal areas of New York City, areas that have really brought the city together, both for New Yorkers and also, also millions of visitors as well. And the challenges are changing. In September 2021, Hurricane Ida delivered flash flooding in the city and further upstate that killed at least 26 people without a storm surge. Other threats spurred by climate change include wildfire smoke from Canada and summer heat waves. All these types of hazards have some connection to the increased risk of, yes, extreme weather events. And part of that increased risk is due to climate change. And we are likely to see more of this type of extreme weather in the future. Activists say there's still time to change the Army Corps of Engineers plan for New York, but they need to listen to locals. So we're at a moment now where our local leaders, the governors of New York and New Jersey, can say to the Corps, we don't approve this plan, we want something different, we want multi-hazards, let's continue to work on it, let's partner and get something better that then goes to Congress. We're not seeing any indication yet that that's gonna happen and that's where we're trying to get the message out and call for our local representatives to come to the table.